What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I hope you guys are having a great day. Today, what I'm gonna have for you is we're gonna go ahead and do a, we're gonna be replacing the rear pads and rotors on this 2018 CX-9. And I'm gonna pretty much go through all the steps and procedures I go through. All right, so let's get started. All right, so one of the first things we're going to want to do is before we start doing anything on the vehicle, before we start tearing anything down, we're going to want to put the vehicle in a in a it's a kind of brake service mode, and it's only for these Mazda CX-9s 2016 to the current model that have this uh, electronic parking brake right here. So I'm going to show you how to put the vehicle into the service mode. So you're going to want to turn the ignition on. And the next thing you want to do is you want to press the accelerator pedal all the way down to the floor. All right, so the next thing we're going to want to do is you're going to press down on the parking brake. And then you're going to hit the start stop button four times. One, two, three, four. And then you're going to hear that noise. That noise is the parking brakes retracting all the way. And if you've done it correctly, you'll get this parking brake light right here on the dash. And that when you see that parking brake light, now you're able to service those rear brake pads and push that piston in on the caliper. After you put the vehicle in the service mode, the next thing I want to do is open the hood. All right, so once you have the hood open, the next thing you want to go ahead and do is you're going to want to loosen this uh, this cap right here. And this is the brake fluid reservoir cap, so you just want to loosen it so that there's no pressure built up when you're pushing those uh, pistons back in. All right, so the next thing we're going to want to go do is uh, lift the vehicle up. So these are the tools right here you're going to need to perform this brake job on the rear of this vehicle. So uh, we're going to need a small little sledge. This is to get the rotor off. You actually don't need a sledge. Uh, this is what I use sometimes to get the rotor off. It's just, uh, I'll show you when I get there. It's just a little, uh, it's a little bolt right here. You need a flathead, a 19 millimeter wrench, a 21 millimeter socket. This is to remove the lug nuts on the vehicle. Or you can just use the tire iron that the vehicle has. A 17 millimeter socket. 14 millimeter socket, a ratchet, brake parts lube, some brake cleaner, and a little bit of sandpaper. All right, so the first thing I want to do is remove the tire. I'm going to do one set at a time. All right, so. When I showed you that first procedure in the beginning, uh, the, uh, the rear parking brake service mode, this is the electronic actuator right here. And what, this, what we're doing when we put it in the service mode is this has a little piston inside of here and it fully retracts the inside piston. So, you can be, so you'll be able to push the caliper piston in. So if you don't put this into service mode before, pushing that caliper in, you are going to damage some internal components on this uh, electronic actuator right there. All right, so the first thing we want to go ahead and do is we're going to, once we once this piston is retracted in here on the actuator, we're going to go ahead and grab our flathead. We're going to stick it right here. And on the front side, you're going to see the, the flathead come out just like that. And all you're going to want to do is just pull on the flathead towards you. And you're going to see that just doing this motion right here and pulling on the flathead is going to push that piston in. Okay, the next thing you want to go ahead and do is see this connector right here. This goes to the electronic actuator. You don't have to on un un you don't have to unhook it, but I like unhooking it because 
it is possible to damage this connector. I've seen them damage from uh, other brake jobs people doing on their own, and they have broken this connector off. I'm just gonna push it in a little, pull back on this little tab right here, and just pull it back. All right, so this is a shot of the rear of the caliper now. So we're gonna be removing this bolt right here, which is the 14 millimeter, and this bolt right up here. Once you get those bolts off, you just be able to remove the caliper with the actuator. Just go ahead and rest this up here. All right, so the next two bolts we want to remove are right here. This is a 17 millimeter, and this one right here is also 17 millimeter. Those are the caliper bracket bolts. All right, once you have both of those off, just remove the caliper bracket. Set it to the side. All right, so on this Mazda right here, I am gonna be using a, a new set of rotors on here. So there's two ways to get this rotor off. One way is with that bolt I showed in the beginning. There's gonna be a little hole in the, in the rotor and you'll be able to thread this in. And then with a little gun or a little ratchet, you could do it with a ratchet. You're just gonna go ahead and uh, just drive this bolt all the way through, and you're gonna see the the rotor just separate from the spindle. Just like that. Or you can go ahead and do it the rudimentary way with the hammer and just smack it right on the back and it should let it loose as well. All right, so once you have this rotor off, you can see all the rust on the, on the front of this. So I use the sandpaper right here, and I'm gonna try to clean as much of this rust off as I can. You don't have to use the sandpaper, I'm just using sandpaper. This is everybody. Uh, a lot of people usually use like a wire brush on a drill. So you want to remove this rust and get all the rust off because when you put the new rotor on here, there's going to be some high spots of rust and that rust will get shoved behind the rotor and will cause it not to sit flush with the spindle right here. All right, so I have this caliper right here. I had to put it on the vise because uh, this pin right here was uh, completely rusted in there. So I had to remove it with, the, with that 19 millimeter as you can see right here, so this is completely stuck in there. So once I got it out, I went ahead and put it on the wire wheel. And I took pretty much all the rust off of it. And then I went ahead and uh, went in here with a little wire brush as well. And I cleaned all of the rust that was inside of here. These are the brake pads right here that we're going to be using. Import Direct. And these ones came from O'Reilly's. These brake pads right here are a uh, premium brake pad and they are ceramic. And then here's all the hardware. The pads themselves we're going to be using. All right, so next thing you want to do once you have the caliper bracket out, we're going to want to remove these clips, these uh, pad retainers right here. So this is where you're going to use your flathead as well. Just get these out. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some brake cleaner and a little a wire brush and I'm going to clean these mating surfaces right here where the pad where the new retainers will sit. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and spray these two edges right here. And then with your wire brush, you're just going to go ahead and clean all that surface off right there where the where the brake hardware is going to sit. Alright, so this is what you're looking for for these mating surfaces right here. To get all that gunk or rust or dust that it had on it before. 
guys. I'm going to go ahead and grab my hardware. Are these little shims right here? You see them? I'm going to go ahead and install these. And you're going to want to install them. Try to pay attention to how you took the last ones off because they're going to go on exactly the same way. Just like that. And now for the pads. Also, when you took the pad, when you, before you take the whole thing apart, this is how it was on the vehicle, in this direction. And then the pads are going to have these little clips on each side. These pads are good, these clips are going to go facing down. Go ahead and install this one. see right there and also this clip is gonna be not on the outside it's gonna be underneath this shim, the shim in between the shim and the and the pad as you can see right there it does not go on the outside it goes on the inside then here's the other one same thing the clip on this side Alright, so once you got the pads on there, the next thing we want to go ahead and do is we're going to lube up the guide pins. With your uh, brake parts lube, just go ahead and uh, just apply it a little bit on there. And we're going to go ahead and slide that pin right in. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the other side. That sounds good. Earlier, these would uh, one the one side wouldn't even move, so it's a hundred times better now. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install our brake rotor. And we clean that surface back there so this brake rotor sits nice and flush up against the spindle. And the next thing you wanna go ahead and do is install our, our brake pads and caliper bracket. Then we're going to go ahead and grab our 17 mil with our wrench, with the ratchet. Go ahead and tighten these up. Next we want to go ahead and install our caliper and uh, electronic parking brake actuator. There we go. And then we're gonna use our ratchet and our 14 millimeter to tighten those up. And it looks like uh, right here, 
This is where the 19 millimeter would have came in handy. Sometimes the bolt will actually spin on the back side and you can hold it with a 19 mil and tighten it. Next thing we're gonna do is uh, grab our connector and install that. That's good. All right, the next thing I wanna go ahead and do is install our wheel. Tire snugged up, and that is how you do a rear brake job on a Mazda CX-9. You're pretty much going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Uh, I could go ahead and record it, but it's pretty much doing exactly what I just did. So that's pretty much how you're going to replace the, the rear pads and rotors on a Mazda CX-9. So back under the hood, the next thing we want to go ahead and do is I'm going to check this cap right here. It looks like it takes dot three brake fluid. So we're going to go ahead and top this off. Let's make sure it gets to that max line. All right, that looks good. Alright, so we're back in the vehicle and uh, we're going to go ahead and take the vehicle out of service mode. So we're going to go ahead and turn it on. And as you can see, that parking symbol is on the dash right there. So we're going to go ahead and uh, press the brake pedal all the way down. We're going to pull up on the parking brake switch. Then we're going to hit the button four times, the start stop button. One, two, three, four. All right. And that went ahead and took it out of the service mode. I'm going to go ahead and start it. And it looks good. Go ahead and test the parking brake. Yep, and it's working good. You can see it right there. Parking brake on. Parking brake off. And that's it. That is how you perform a rear brake job on a 2016 to 2023 20, model CX-9. See everything in there is good. New rotors, new pads. And so if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, the likes go a long way and I really appreciate you guys watching these videos. So that's about it. Again, thank you for tuning in, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.